Isaiah chapter 60 and verse number 1 Arise, shine, for thy light has come. Why did he say arise? Because darkness shall cover the earth. Verse 2 And cross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And he said, And the Gentiles will come to your light. And they are kings to the brightness of your rising. That means by my light, I will make you more than conquerors among others. You will outshine your peers and become the envy of kings. In the day when all faces shall gather blackness, and everyone shall be overtaken by gloominess. It's not because you are operating by spiritual light. His glory shall be seen upon thee. So it is light that distinguishes you among men. And light is simply spiritual understanding of the way out for the entrance of his word is what gives light and it gives understanding to the simple so light is simply Psalm 119 verse 130 light is simply a spiritual understanding of the way out of where you don't want to remain spiritual understanding of the way out spiritual understanding of the way out spiritual understanding of the way out august 26 1986 1987 sorry 20 years ago the Lord said to me in that hotel room in America, Arise, get back home and make my people rich. It's a prophetic mandate to raise men who shall be more than conquerors financially. That was spoken to me 20 years ago and 20 years after there are many men and women both on ground at Canaan land today and in the various nations of the earth who are direct proofs of the validity of that mandate what is the way out of the blackness of poverty and the shame of luck what is the way out of financial captivity Psalm 126 and verse 1 when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongues with singing. Then said they among the heathens, The Lord has done great things for them. And we answered them, saying, 
The Lord has done great things for us. We are off. We are glad. We know how to have him turn it again by using the same method, engaging the same truth that we engaged. Turn again our captivity, O oh Lord, as the streams of the south. For they that sow in tears, they shall reap with joy. To sow in tears means sacrifice. They that sow in tears shall reap with joy. He that goeth up weeping, but bearing precious sacrifice, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Sacrifice is of no benefit to God, it's only of benefit to the sacrificer. There is nothing from you or me that we add any value to God. Everything from you and me to God adds value back to me and you. Ah. I have said, God will never need you and me for anything but you and me will need God for everything. If you don't understand this, you may mistake sacrifice for supporting God. And that will be an insult. You say, where are you coming from? I just come from, from helping God. God has a challenge, so I went to help him. God was about to crash, so I, I rushed him to support him. That's why the word support is an insult to God. Who are you to support God? Can you support a trailer that is about to fall? <laughs> the trailer is falling. He said, No, it's my first trailer. No, that's the end. When the trailer is falling, you let him fall on his own. God is too big to require your miniature help. He said, If I were hungry, would I have asked you? And he was talking about sacrifice. I am not asking you to sacrifice for me. I'm asking you to sacrifice for you. <laughs> Hear this very interesting story. One day, the devil was influencing me to take a step that was contrary to God's plan. And my son, Ajibade, was there. He was coordinating that negative arrangement. <laughs> Amen. We wanted the church to have a network in town so that people could have access to Holy Communion and everything because Lagos could not give us their public transport mall way to the number that we require. Otherwise, everybody would be walking on the street. And no governor will want to see that kind of situation. So one day we asked for 100 bus. They say it's impossible. They can't give us more than 70. The government is concerned about how people walk on the road when we take buses. And <laughs> I waited for God to give us a marching order. There was no order. And God came to me and said, My boy, did I tell you I cannot buy buses? I said, I've never thought of it. So one day I said, Hey, we are buying buses, a hundred buses. You want to be a part of buying the buses? Move to that classroom. Move away from here. Trek, trek to that classroom and wait there. And we took an offering that day and bought all the hundred buses at a time. Now listen to me. When we were going to buy the first aircraft, my son was here with me. 
We were in a seminar on Saturday morning. And I said, God just spoke to me that it's time to get the aircraft. We have not found the prize. Oh. So we walked down to the service because it was a seminar on Saturday morning. I said, friends, God just told me this morning, it's time to get the aircraft. Are you ready? Come on, let's give to the Lord. We took the offering once we bought the aircraft. Now listen to me. God does not need you for anything. Don't let anybody sleep by your side, though. If it means eating him, eat him. Amen. I want to show you the way out of managing and scratching. A sacrifice is it. Can I hear your loudest amen? Now listen. Today we have 300 buses. How many? We run them like running bicycle. No stress. Fuel, no idea. The cost of this has never appeared on my table. Who told you God needs your help? One day the Lord said to me, my son, give me that car. Ah, I called my wife. I said, God just asked now for this car. She said, praise the Lord. And on my way, God said, my son, David, even if you don't want to be rich, it's too late. Now, one sacrifice brought about a turnaround. Tonight, your sacrifice we bought a dramatic turnaround in your life. Yeah. During our 25th year anniversary, the Lord ministered to me for us to see the 25 million seed sacrifice to another ministry. And I told my associates, I said, that's what the Lord just spoke to me. They said, ah, yeah, we do it. And so 25 million seed was sown. The level of visitations we have had inexplicable. We have acquired over 4,000 acres of land behind your fence. without taking any offering in the church why the first night here there were 75,000 people outside why the four days or five days of Shino everything in the small Canaan land is under pressure why we must create a tabernacle for God and habitation for his people. Now listen to me. If God bought about 4,000 acres of property, and you know the cost of property here, without you, will he now be writing an application and filling form for you to help him? They bought 4,000 acres behind you. Will they now be begging you to fence it? I told my uncle years ago, when he said he was going to allocate me a land, and the other ones were very upset. I said, don't worry, sir. Don't worry. Anybody who cannot buy land cannot build a house. You can't buy the land, you can't build a house. So cease sacrifice particularly prophetic sacrifices as we take by prophetic injunction at Shiloh as your opportunity for another turnaround. I'm not talking to poor people. I'm talking to rich people who will be richer. I'm not talking to small people. I'm talking to great people who shall be greater. 
I'm not talking to low people. I'm talking to high people who will begin to fly higher. Psalm 50. My text, and then we take the Shiloh sacrifice, which is the prophetic order handed down since the inception of Shiloh. How many have truly experienced God's visitation through Shiloh sacrifice? Let me see your hand. You are before the Lord, don't lie. How many have truly experienced God's visitation? You are going to experience His stronger hand now. A sacrifice is not limited to material returns. A sacrifice does much more than that. And Psalm 50, beginning from verse 5, gather my saints together unto me, those who have made sacrifice, covenant with me by sacrifice. And the heavens will declare my righteousness because I am judge of all. Psalm 50. Gather my saints together unto me. Verse 5. Those who that, that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And verse 6. And the heavens shall declare his righteousness for God is judge of all. Hear, all my people, and I will speak, O Israel. I will testify against you, I am God, even thy God. I will not reprove thee for thy sacrifices or thy burnt offerings to have been continually before me. I will take no bullock out of thy house, or he goes out of thy field. For every beast of the field is mine. The cattle upon a thousand hills. I know all the fowls of the mountains, and, we, and the white beasts of the field are mine. Verse 12. If I were hungry, will I have asked you? For the world is mine, and the fullness thereof. Will I eat flesh or bulls? Or drink the blood of goats? Will God ride your car? Will he build on your land? Will he spend your currency? Does he have a bank account where he will drop your check? Hear what he says. Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High. And verse 15, everybody let's read verse 15 together. And call upon him in the day of trouble, I will deliver thee. So the sacrifice I'm asking you to give is for your sake. He said, don't think you are impressing me with your sacrifice. You are adding color to your destiny by your sacrifice. You are establishing my, my security in your life in the day of trouble. You know, he said, the blessings of the Lord, it maketh rich and he adds no sorrow. So what sacrifice does is to secure the blessings of God in your life. And you will call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you will glorify me. Do you know that after this sacrifice, nobody will have any reason to pity you again. Yeah. Everyone will be saying the glory of the Lord in your life. Yeah. All of our brethren in the satellite view centers around the nations of the world, you are gathered in many places right now and you are hooked on to this service by satellite technology. I'd like you to understand that one way your captivity can be torn is via the truth of sacrifice. Sacrifice. It is not a means of helping God. It's a spiritual device for helping you. Sacrifice has no value adding to God. It's not adding value to church. Particularly your church. 
adding no value to it but it's adding value to you god can never be in trouble and even if you got into trouble you are too small to be called upon to say oh my son i'm in trouble in my place they say kole burula ye kiko kibaba ni odo one month wa lorun it can't be so bad on earth that a man will be saying i put this in the hand of my son who is in heaven you don't transfer trouble from a father to a son it's a son who transfers trouble to the father he said you shall call upon me in the day of trouble because one day is coming you will need me so sacrifice against the rainy day that when that day comes you see me you will not be left alone in the day of trouble this prophetic psalm fully explains the reason for vows and sacrifices psalm 126 talks about the benefits psalm 50 talks about the security sacrifice opens the door of abundance sacrifice secures the abundance against sorrows and molestations of the devil two thousand acres of the property so acquired or like i say humorously allocated it is god who allocated that kind of land you can't buy it has been set apart as shiloh camp grand so that when you grow to be one million you are still covered on the ground can i hear your loudest amen so that when it is fully developed you will not be under the sun in any session of the meeting can i hear your amen if you are happy there was a plague in the land and god the prophet said to david you want this plague to stop rear an altar of sacrifice maybe your life has been suffering ups and downs by demonic interjections satanic manipulation a display of the wickedness of witches and wizards the prophet came and said you need to lay an altar of a sacrifice second samuel 24 beginning from verse 16 to 24 and david responded immediately hear this as soon as god spoke to the prophet he told the angel in charge of the plague it is enough it is what enough and after david reared that altar of sacrifice the plague was stayed so when the sacrifice was announced god says stop don't carry on without plague and when the sacrifice was offer god said enough go back now that is the same order that will be given to everything upsetting your destiny and this is what david said when arauna said take it for free he said nay verse 24 for i will not render unto the lord offer burnt offerings of that which cost me nothing second samuel 24 verse 24 so it is the cost on you that makes it a sacrifice what is a sacrifice for one is a leftover for another somebody brings in 10 naira and god said hey my son you brought me a whole 10 naira me ah angels enough stop the play turn his captivity make him a 
an envy of the land for 10 naira because she has brought in her entire living and somebody has brought 100,000 and God said will you call this one a sacrifice to me look at your nose is this a sacrifice to me or you think I'm a joker can this be called a sacrifice look at your nose So it is the cost that makes your burnt offering a sacrifice, not the volume. It is not the volume. I am a product of the validity of the covenant of sacrifice. During the time of my wife's ordeal, one of the forces I engaged in on her behalf to stay the plague was very crazy sacrifices. Crazy sacrifices. You had one of my sons who gave a testimony. They were giving sacrifices on behalf of a child that is to be born. And so the forces blocking the child to be born for eight years was cleared of the way. It's another time for you to experience yet another turning. God has turned your captivity before. He said he will turn it again. Yeah. That project is in the billions. Both in terms of infrastructure and facilities that will be required there. But God is not in need. He only devised a means for meeting our needs. It is your opportunity tonight to plug in to yet another turning of your captivity. How many will say thank you, Jesus? Stand to your feet. Thank you, Jesus. What do you think will be acceptable as a sacrifice from you by the Lord? A sacrifice <laughs> that will be a sweet smelling savour unto God. If I ever call a sacrifice, what I used to call a sacrifice 20 years ago, it would be an insult on God. If I would call a sacrifice, what I used to call a sacrifice five years ago, it will be another insult, adding insult to injury to God. Because he has blessed me beyond where he was five years ago. Stop mocking God. Let us now demonstrate our zeal for God as we lift up our two hands to heaven and thank him for the privilege of another altar of sacrifice. Go ahead. Listen to this. This ministry has never suffered financial frustration. By reason of the light that this mandate is privileged to carry. From this night. The same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob becomes your Jehovah Jireh. You shall never be financially stranded again. When we were to begin our university mandate, we took heavy amount of dollars and went to lay sacrifice in a university that we admire. 
outside the country. When this sacrifice was placed in the hand of the president of the university, he was confused. He's never seen that kind of volume from a black continent before. He says, excuse me, just give me a time. He went to his room and locked up. He couldn't stand the volume. Today we run Covenant University like running primary school. By virtue of a turning, a turning, a turning. There's a turning for your family, your business, your ministry tonight. I teach you they are the things I do there's never been a time of sacrifice in this church where God was looking for my own it's always there I knew where my sacrifice started from in this ministry I knew where it moved to after 4 years after 5 years after 10 years after 21 years Can I ever call a one million a sacrifice to God today? He will, he will slap me. Can I call five million a sacrifice to God today? He will say, stupid boy, get out of my sight. Why? His blessing on me has left that level. Can I bring an offering to the Lord today that is 1,000 naira? He won't accept it. Can I give him 10,000 today as an offering? He won't take me serious. If I give an offering of 100,000, boy, I think you should check your papers properly. Is somebody ready for a change of level? Don't just be at Shiloh. Be in touch with the prophetic platform that Shiloh creates. This sacrifice will be the most effectual since you are born. There is nothing new about lands, about houses. Even in us of the apostles, they were given lands, they were given houses. There is nothing strange about television. God won't watch television. A sacrifice. Somebody said, I carry my television with tears. And I drop it. You had the testimony here. I said, okay, who is watching the television? Is it me? When I get home at 3 a.m. every day, is that when they watch the television? And everything in that family turned. And they became a house owner. Everything turned. Something will turn that nobody can deny in your life. This night is declared a turning point night for you. Whatever sacrifice God has laid in your heart for the turning of your own captivity, Either you are giving it once at a time or you are giving it on a monthly basis. It is left to you between you and God. Get seated. Let the ushers pass on to you a piece of paper each. As our custom is, ushers move like lightning. Move like lightning. Don't move. Satan, I stand in my prophetic office and I declare you Helpless regarding everyone gathered at Shiloh 2007 in the name of Jesus. Witches and wizards, I cause your hold on any destiny here in the name of Jesus. Whatever followed you here from home. 
and has been tormenting you over the years within the next one hour under the sound of this vibration prophetic unction it is gone forever from your life Somebody has waited on God for upward of 25 years for a child. You got your miracle now. Yeah. Shiloh 2008, you are coming with your miracle babies. Yeah. Every negative medical verdict on your life is converted to a testimony in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. I'd like you to know that the next one hour is a destiny Recovery moment for you. Whatever has been denied you as your right in Christ till now shall be restored back to you now. In Jesus precious name give the Lord a big hand of praise and be seated please